Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. There's a lot happening in the world. Let's check it out and run the numbers together. Bitcoin is currently up 0.75% to 16,694. Ethereum is down 0.6% to 1204. A lot of news is currently focused on the FTX crypto crisis. SEC Chair Gary Gensler is falling under considered criticism as a March decree prevented banks and broker dealers from custodying assets, leaving investors open to greater risk. Oh, Gary, what really caused the problems with FTX? The new CEO of FTX in charge of restructuring calls it an unprecedented mess. He actually says a lot more than that. J. John Ray III with over 40 years of legal and restructuring experience and having supervised situations involving allegations of criminal activity and malfeasance such as Enron, said that typically it's because of internal controls, regulatory compliance, HR and systems integrity. But FTX is completely different. He goes on to say, never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information as has occurred with FTX. From compromised systems integrity and faulty regulatory oversight abroad to the concentration of control in the hands of a very small group of inexperienced unsophisticated and potentially compromised individuals, this situation is unprecedented. He goes on to say that many of the companies in the FTX group, especially those organized in Antigua and the Bahamas, did not have appropriate corporate governance. I understand that many entities, for example, never had board meetings, and these entities were controlling billions of dollars. The FTX group did not maintain centralized control of its cash. Cash management procedural failures included the absence of an accurate list of bank accounts. Because of past cash management failures, the debtors do not know exactly how much cash the FTX group has held. You can see what an absolute debacle the internal structure of FTX represents. It's actually really good to go beyond the headlines when we talk about an unprecedented mess. Exactly what does that mean? I hope that gives you some kind of insight. The FTX saga looks like it's just actually getting going. And crypto lender Genesis has sought an emergency loan of $1 billion before it suspended withdrawals on its website. Due to a liquidity crunch, due to certain illiquid assets on its balance sheet, citing the sudden failure of SBF's crypto exchange, FTX. And SBF is set to face a criminal lawsuit for fraud in New York for misuse of customer funds. A lot of people say that crypto is bad. Crypto is not bad. Crypto is the next evolution of the internet. Web 2.0, which is the internet of information, to Web 3.0, which is the internet of money. And unfortunately, where there's money, there can be bad actors, especially if they're greedy. Exactly the same thing happened with Internet 2.0 or Web 2.0 in the dot-com crash. We had bad actors getting in because people were throwing money at the concept of the internet before the year 2000. But look what survived, what incredible companies, Google, Amazon, all of those companies came out of the dot-com crash and they came out much, much stronger. I definitely agree with Alicia Huss, the CFO of Coinbase, when she said this. Because the corporate structure of FTX is so incredibly messy, it's like spaghetti. And I covered this about a three, four days ago. If you go to episode 713 and look around the 3 minute 30 mark, 
you'll actually see the corporate structure of FTX. FTX is, <laughs> it's a mess. There's no question about it. And FTX advisors find only 740 million in crypto while a liquidity gap stands at 8 billion. And what does smart money do at times like this? This particular headline will give you an idea. US banks to pounce on fintech deals as valuations plunge. Binance to relaunch bid to buy bankrupt Voyager Digital. And New York Mayor Eric Adams says we need to keep faith in crypto for New York City and plays down the market collapse. He says cryptocurrency and blockchain are still an incredible opportunity for the city. And it is short-sighted to believe that setbacks in an industry are an indication that it won't experience long-term growth. I started an internet service provider in 1993. And an ISP is a company that provides access to the internet for both personal and business customers. And so many smart people got the internet wrong. Even Bill Gates, he tried to get it into the internet and he massively failed. He literally missed the boat. This is in 1997, quite a few years after I actually created an internet service provider. But Bill Gates admitted that he believed the technology for killer applications was inadequate to, to lure customers to the internet. Basically, Bill Gates did not believe in the internet in 1997. And Robert Metcalf, you may know Metcalf's Law, the inventor of the Ethernet, declared in December 1995, I predict the internet will soon go spectacularly supernova and in 1996 catastrophically collapse. Oh, Robert, no, that didn't happen. And you may remember this quote from 1995 from Clifford Stoll of Newsweek. He said, the truth is no online database will replace your daily newspaper. No CD-ROM can take place of a competent teacher and no computer network will change the way government works. Oh, Clifford. We're seeing the same thing in crypto. Basically, people do not understand that crypto is not anything new than an upgrade to the existing internet from Web 2.0, reading and writing information, to Web 3.0, owning the protocols that the Internet of Money runs on. But some visionaries got it right. For example, one of them with, was Jeff Bezos, founder and executive chairman and former president and CEO of Amazon, with a net worth estimated to be $114.5 billion as of November 2022. Bezos said, hey, I think I can sell books on the internet. Hey, why don't I go for that? And Amazon was born. A lot of people thought that Amazon had a free ride. It was all very easy. It was absolutely not easy. And Amazon started in Bezos's garage. And in the early days, Bezos held meetings at Barnes and Nobles. And if you think about this, Bezos was holding executive meetings. This is called corporate governance, something that FTX lacked. And Jeff expected employees to work 60 hour weeks at least. And this is Jeff working at his desk. This is what a billionaire looks like. They start small and scale. This is why when you see people talking about crypto as the next evolution, as something like an incredible opportunity, this is why. And Binance is going to be definitely a big, big player going forward. Binance granted financial service permission in Abu Dhabi. And where is Abu Dhabi? You can see it's right here. It's actually the capital of the United Arab Emirates, or UAE. These nations understand what incredible promise crypto has, and they want to control it. While other countries are mulling over what they're going to do, these countries are doing something about it. In other news, XRP gets its first stablecoin through Stably USD. This stablecoin is called USDS. If you go across to stably.io, you can see the different blockchain networks that USDS actually works on. And we can see Stellar, Ethereum, XRPL, 
VET, VeChain, Stella, Harmony, Icon, Chia, Binance Chain, BEP, and a couple of others, Tezos. But one thing to keep in mind, they talk about, and this is really important, but I don't see much information on their website, introducing Stably USD or USDS, a fiat-backed stablecoin redeemable one-to-one -one for US dollar held in trust accounts managed by regulated US custodians. That sounds absolutely awesome. And when I look through their website, I just can't find much information on it at all. If you go to the homepage area just up here, it talks about regulatory compliant. I believe this is the most important thing that people can be talking about at this particular time through Prime Trust. And if you look at Prime Trust, it talks about keeping up with the regulatory environment. I think Stably needs to do a much, much better job of bringing that forefront to the forefront. It's regulatory compliance. And you can see these young lads, well, young to me because I'm over 50, <laughs> and you can see the board of advisors. Terrific. So they've got some investors. But if you think of FTX, that had investors too. So people are not looking so much at investors now. They're looking for proof. And I think if Stably can show this proof, they're going to do really, really well. There's a lot of very fascinating stuff that they've got here, even Stablecoin as a service. And they talked about VeChain just getting rejected from USDC and USDT. But hey, it worked with Stably. That's a win. That's good stuff. But the question is, we need to go further than that. We need to have much, much more transparency. I'm just basically showing you something that we do inside the masterclass. We dig deep on news headlines. We want to know exactly what is said is real. Why do we need to dig into headlines? For example, this is just from today. Scientists confirm a killer asteroid will crash to Earth. Well, that's pretty bad news, wouldn't you say? Let's have a look. So what are we actually seeing here? When we go through we can see this particular asteroid, 2022 AP7. And they're basically saying that 2022 AP7 is a Earth-destroying asteroid, and it's going to hit the Earth. I look at something like this and say, ah, oh, yeah, right. Let's have a look at the research. The key, when you're researching, go to a reputable site. This is spacereference.org. And when we look at 2022 AP7, we can actually see this. This means that there is a wide berth between this asteroid and the Earth at all times. But that news headline says we're all going to get wiped out. And 2022 AP7 orbits the Sun every 1830 days or every 5.01 years. And it is larger than 99% of asteroids, very roughly comparable in size to the US Pentagon. And they estimate it's between 1.011 to 2.260 kilometers in diameter. It was discovered in February of 2022, but they could actually use and go back through their data up to December 20th, 2017 to actually determine its orbit. I can imagine some people could read this headline, a killer asteroid will crash to Earth, and they could even commit suicide. People need to be really responsible with their headlines. This is why when you read a news story, you really must dig deeper. I think it's a very, very important thing, especially if the news headline is something relevant to you. This is actually terrific news for XRP. But the thing is, as a diligent investor and a diligent trader, please look behind the news headlines. And just a very nice comment that I wanted to share with you from Whale Abu Salah. Mr. Ken, I have no words to express how grateful I am to be a part of the KS family, appreciating the effort you are putting into the community to elevate our trading skills to the next levels. Can't wait to continue to the next version of the KS Masterclass. Thank you, my friend. Very, very nice of you. 
Before we get into the crypto market, there's many people in our global KS family that are going through life pullbacks, some really significant ones. I just want to let you know that our love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. The sun will come out again and there's always hope. It's really important to keep a positive attitude while you're going through these life pullbacks. There's no pullback, no backstep without two steps forward. So if you've had 20 back steps, you're looking for 40 steps going forward. Just think about it like this. It really, really helps. In the past trading session, we saw the VIX coming up, but then retracing. And that actually pushed the major indices down and then they recovered a little bit. We can see bond prices starting to normalize. We can see bond yields starting to reflect. And what's happened? The dollar, the US dollar, DXY has come up and that's put pressure on gold. Oil is still retracing. And when you think about the demand destruction that's occurring within the economic system, it's little wonder. The central banks are basically trying to kill demand. And we can see when we look at junk bonds, there's still a degree of risk on activity, but it's just moderating just a little bit. Total crypto market cap is currently 787.79 billion and it's a little bit indecisive at the moment. It's below smart money sell levels, one at 795.021 billion and a higher one up at 816.724 billion. What we're actually seeing, we have a degree of limited support inside the market at 768 and 762 billion. Currently, market cap is 787. And when we look at this, we can see the total crypto market cap is currently under a level of very, very short term resistance. And it's overcome one level of support, but it's currently weakening. This means that there's a lot of sell activity at that 795 billion. If we can come up and liquidate all the sellers at this level, we will actually head towards the 816 level. If the sellers overpower us, we're actually going down to this 768 billion. Just keep your eyes on total crypto market cap. It's a really, really good measure. We can see with the updated SLs, the buyers are coming in and supporting the 16649 smart money buy level. It had a bit of trouble getting across it, but now it's making a play to actually take out that once smart money sell level, which is a resistance level, and turn it into a support level. Bitcoin is currently 16,706. If we continue this progression, the next smart money resistance or sell level is at 17093. And the next smart money buy level or support is at 15,758. And masterclass students, please check out LV25 if you have that section open. No matter where you are in the masterclass, it's really important. And that's what I do with these LV videos. I update the masterclass. So you've always got the most important news coming through as LV videos. And of course, <laughs> in the daily channel, this is what I do as well. But LV25 is really, really important. Turning to the longs and the shorts and masterclass students, you get my live chart in TG34. We can see the longs have been coming out of the market and the shorts are kind of flatlining, thinking, do I go up or do I go down? And the rough translation at the moment, even though they're getting liquidated, as we can see in terms of increasing price, they are on an upward slant. They're trying to enter the market. In the past 24 hours, there's been 46.24 million in liquidations across 19,652 positions. And if you would like to be, if you would like to avoid getting liquidated, just buy at spot and you'll be safe. Over the past 24 hours, total liquidations around 55% have been long. Across the past 12 hours, 50% short went the other way. Past four hours, increasing number of shorts around 72% short and the past hour decreasing number of shorts about 56% short. It's just really good to keep these stats in mind and we can see we've got really low volumes at the moment and more longs have been hit than the shorts. 
We need to be prepared for three-way decision making. And what does that actually mean? It means this Borsog code applies to your entire portfolio and what you think the market is going to do within the next 24 hours. I've got this little guy here, which is kind of an explanation. And I do a deep dive on the Borsog code in episode 685. In the next 24 hours, so the code is 24 hours, I give a 70% probability, this is this particular part here, of the market going down. If this happens, so if that happens, the next part of the code in X, if this happens, I predict 60% of my portfolio going down, 10% remaining neutral and 30% going up. And what's the last part here? It's the synchronization factor. I feel 30% in sync with the markets, 30% Midas touch or 30% in the zone state. Can you do Borsog codes on each and every trade you do? Absolutely, that's a really, really good idea. And this one is across your entire portfolio, but it's up to you. You're an artist. If you want to go and do a Borsog code for each trade, why not? That's a great idea. The more daily three-dimensional risk management you have, the better off you'll be. It's a very, very highly negative market and highly volatile, volatile market at the moment. And we know that you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. And the market's return is based on your learning, your active learning. And active learning is the intersection of knowledge and courage. But the market will penalize any blame, any negativity, any conflict, and any gambling. So it's important to have inner peace when you trade. Rule 45 from the masterclass, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We know that Bitcoin, its gravitational pull, pulls the entire crypto market with it. And the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours, Litecoin, <laughs> floating up, Arweave, up, Chili's, Ton, Kava, Quant, and Leo. We talked a little bit about Chili's yesterday with the World Cup, FIFA, coming up. Really, really interesting. I think we're going to see a lot of volatility in the fan and social sector. And the greatest losers over the past 24 hours, Curve, Near, Casper, Synthetics, Lunacy, DCR, and Solana. Looking at the top eight, unfortunately, Solana has fallen off the top eight and has been replaced by SHIB. But I just wanted to give you some insight into what is happening here. Binance released this press release. Deposits of USDC on the Solana network and USDT on the Solana network. Tokens suspended. They've been temporarily suspended until further notice. And now, after internal assessment and review, Binance has now resumed deposits for Solana in USDT. One thing that we found with the Terra Luna collapse, where there's smoke, there could well be fire. The fact that Solana's dropped off the top eight cryptos could suggest that ties with FTX are much, much deeper than people think. So now with Solana out, SHIB makes its entry. Inside the masterclass, we mark up our charts with the CTKS method. Then we look to outside trends to understand how external markets impact on crypto. And we know that they do. Then we look back into the crypto market. Enhancing our pattern recognition is very, very important. And before we buy or sell, we have real wealth and positive excellence as our aim. That actually displaces fear and inserts courage as the manager of our decision-making process. And it's really important to put greed aside. Greed is a killer. It will kill your finances, kill your relationships, and kill just about everything else. Just look at SBF. Greed killed him, absolutely. And there's many, many ways to buy and sell. There are expectations that the bankruptcy court might order the liquidation of any funds in Solana, and that's going to cause a massive problem for the price of Solana too. And Sam Bankman frieds January 9, 2021 tweet is not at all professional. 
It's also important to note that the Solana-based stablecoins have been removed from other exchanges, including OK, OKX and Bybit. Solana has been pushed out of the top eight, but it's still amongst the top cryptos. So let's see what happens with Solana, but it has decreased nearly 60% in value. And that's basically twice the median percentage decrease well over that. So please be aware of this. Tron down about 22.6%. Litecoin has been doing really well. It's only down about 8.4% since the FTX meltdown occurred. Uni down about 23.7%. AVAX down about 33%. Link down about 28%, Adam down nearly 35%, and Stellar XLM down about 22%. But you can see the majority of these tokens are moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. And you can see Litecoin is showing a lot of strength at the current time. In times of weakness, you want strong cryptos. Please remember that. You don't want weak ones. Weak ones can melt or even drop to zero. When we look at exchange tokens, we can see BNB down 24%, LEO, CRO down 40%, OKB down around 11%, KCS, KuCoin down around 30%, HT down around 46%. This is showing a lot of weakness. HT, Hubei, is actually getting hit. And FTT has come down 92.34%. We can see most of the wallet tokens beginning to chill out, except for SFP. It's doing quite well. Safe pal. The DEXs are fairly mixed in terms of their percent returns, just a little under the median reduction. But we can see Bell trying to take off. Wow, good on you, Bell. There could be some really interesting opportunities occurring in the fan token and social space. We can see Chili's just going just going for it literally it's seeking to get above this top level resistance and i did some ssls some stanfield levels on chilies that i'll share with you a little bit later but it shows a really interesting picture ah actually i'll share them now if chilies can break this resistance coming in at 2350 it's going to do really really well if it can turn it into support we have a couple of SLs under there that are reasonably strong. If that is the case, the next level will be 2551 or 2552. You can notice there's a lot of scaling in here, a lot of decimal places. But when you come to buy, you can do four decimal places. Ah, if we manage to turn this particular smart money buy level into a smart money buy level, and it's really wavering at the moment, it's either sell or buy. It's very, very undecided. But if we can just go up from here, the next level of major resistance is about 8.43% away. We can see we have a lot of support playing down through here. A key one is actually that 2252 level and another one, the 2106 level and we've got a lot of meshes in terms of the market structure of chilies we have some light buy levels one at 2328 and another one at 2308 we know that bitcoin actually dictates what chilies will do if bitcoin goes down Chili's will go down. As we know that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, so directional correlation will play out. If Bitcoin goes up, we would expect Chili's to go up. If Bitcoin goes down, we would expect Chili's to go down, but they go up and down by different percentages. Thinking from the other perspective, because we always consider the down move first, if we actually don't maintain this smart money buys or sell level, it's so close, it's probably more like a sell level at the moment. But if we don't maintain that at, let me just get it for you exactly, I'll do it this way. At 2352, if we don't maintain that 2352 level, we do have a lot of support going down, especially down here around 10% of the way down. 
we always get on the right side of the percentage as traders that is our mission and actually placing orders down is what we do we always start small and scale with borsog borsog is rule 621 buy on red that's the bore sog is sell on green and we're always turning over our trades now we have some understanding as to the smart money buy and sell levels sitting underneath here underneath chilies it's like x-ray vision it's just awesome the ctks method just totally rocks we can see that chilies has a lot of positive momentum and that's because of the world cup and there's going to be many many fan tokens that are going to exhibit or going to inherit it's like chilies is the parent and these little fan tokens are the children i just zoomed out there a little bit to show you a little bit more depth okay let's have a look at mask mask is currently just aligning with bitcoin's gravity audio just a bit weaker but if it overcomes this resistance and it's been doing so it could look really good SNT just trying to overcome resistance at the moment steam still a bit under resistance but actually stronger than Bitcoin's gravity IQ a little bit weaker and when we look at the fan tokens such as Santos and Lazio Lazio and Santos put in an absolute ripping rally recently they're just digesting the gains and we can see there's upward price momentum here always expect the price can wick down what you want to do is always to buy on the right side of the percentage we can see another fan token porto doing really really well we would expect this to continue as the world cup gains more and more attention alpine also doing really really well psg doing well bar not doing so well poor old bar city not doing too badly but doesn't have this explosive nature but this is the really interesting thing about these social or fan tokens they can just literally take off and that's what JUV decided to do good on you JUV ACM is not doing too badly but not explosive like these at least not yet and myth under Bitcoin's gravity before you buy or sell it's very very important to master emotional control for example courage means that you go slow to go fast fear means oh i've got fear of missing out if i don't buy right now because of this headline well i'm going to miss out so i need to buy and then you read the headline you do the research ouch it wasn't anything that i expected those pesky media outlets leading you astray but you can also have fear uncertainty and doubt also caused by people wanting to sell headlines be very very careful of the media such as the asteroid story we just looked at it's important to actually do your own research that is what actually dyor means do your own research which is you dig a little bit more deeply in to try and figure out what's going on as a community we subscribe to positive excellence and this is all about putting money last and putting the proper processes first when you put proper process first you don't get into trouble like SBF and so many other people that have just literally caused so many problems across the crypto space because they're just searching for money and they'll do anything to get it I mentioned yesterday that we would talk about forgiveness and forgiveness is a critically important skill to have in life life will not always go your way in fact mostly it will go against you we've just got to be successful by having a positive excellence outlook on life and getting up each time we're knocked down and art said on forgiveness the quicker you can forgive yourself and anyone else the quicker you can get back into the game and prosper brilliant art and actually what happens if you don't have forgiveness if you have unforgiveness or resentment in your heart is like drinking poison and expecting the other person who has wronged you to die says flamingo forgiveness is releasing negative emotions so that you can live life at your best and flamingo raises a really really important thing 
all hurt, all disappointment actually occurs in the past. You have to have something gone wrong to actually be hurt or have resentment. But as Flamingo says, the past is over. And in order to move forward, we must all forgive ourselves and others. Releasing the past is not easy, but it is necessary for our growth and personal development. Thank you, Flamingo. And Badger said, it reminds him of a quote, Forgiveness is unlocking the door to set someone free and realizing you were the prisoner. Raja said, Forgiveness is a strength rather than a weakness. To forgive means that we do not carry any bitterness in us for ourselves or for somebody else because that bitterness destroys our life eventually. Forgiveness means that we will not act out of resentment. Rather, we will act out of what is needed for the situation. Raja, very, very prophetic words, my friend. And Oscar, who is indeed a scholar, mean, on forgiveness, the English verb to forgive is derived from the Old High German, meaning to cease to resent or claim requital for a debt. And when you forgive, it's all about acting differently and also ceasing to act in an aggressive manner in public. Oscar sums it up really, really well. So forgiveness can be something changing in us or and or a change in our external behavior. Thank you, my friend. And Al says, I believe practicing forgiveness while enforcing boundaries is a strength and an important part of being kind to others. That's what BKTO means. It supports a happier and more grateful life. And it's really good for the health as well. It lessens stress, anxiety, and depression. And forgiving yourself is equally as important and is an important part of the real wealth, positive excellence process and su successfully applying the CTKS method. Very, very true, Al. If you get into a trade or an investment and it goes against you and you don't forgive yourself, you're going to accumulate losses. You're not going to be able to turn around, reset things and then focus on profits. And Chris says, forgiveness is the foundation of inner peace. They go hand in hand. It's a part of the bridge that will bring you from zone one and zone two to zone three and zone four. Chris says, you cannot drive darkness out with more darkness. And Michael says, forgiveness is the power to choose to be liberated from a victim mentality. And when we choose to forgive someone that has wronged us, we choose to take away the power and control that person has over us. Well done, Michael. And Wabi Sabi said some really great things. And also, without forgiveness, there is no redemption. Without redemption, there's no lesson and no growth. And Brett really hits the nail on the head. I suspect most people won't care if you forgive them or not, but you sure will. Forgiveness is first and foremost for yourself. Harboring grievances and hate is destructive and can lead to the deterioration of both physical and mental health. Forgive yourself for not getting it right, making a mistake, saying the wrong thing, for handling a situa situation the wrong way or for hurting people. You were doing the best you could with the tools that you had at the time. Learn from your mistake and fix it so it doesn't happen again. By forgiving yourself, you allow yourself to begin healing. Very beautiful, Brett. And Brett said as well, much peace and love to all caught up in the FTX saga and all its wider fallout. Thank you, my friend. And John said something really good. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong from Mahatma Gandhi. And John just went into a little bit more depth on forgiveness. Forgiveness is the keeper of inner peace. But when you don't forgive, what happens? Inner conflict develops into negative excellence, creating a vengeful attitude. Outer conflict results ru ruining one's own and other people's lives. And it's a good thing to know that all people just relate to others from the position that they're in. Sometimes they just don't know that they're causing harm to others. 
The human being's natural reaction when someone is aggressive and offensive is probably, on average, to be an aggressive and offensive person back at that person. But when you actually chill out, when you look at them and say, oh, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing what you're saying, but certainly not the way that you're saying it, you can actually diffuse situations that could become quite problematic. In zone three and zone four, we actually seek to keep our inner peace and create outer peace as well. In zone one and zone two, it's all about panic, blame and conflict. Panic, blame and conflict create a disastrous life with enormous amounts of stress and stress that harms the body. And as Flamingo said, it's very, very well known that dis-ease or dis-disease, literally dis-lack of ease, causes a lot of medical problems. You could say that zone one and zone two don't just create a loss of money, they create a loss of health as well. Because those zones are so incredibly stressful. That's why in zone three and four, we seek inner peace first, and that just creates outer peace second. You'll find there's always something to get offended by. And in zone one and zone two, people are looking for offense. They're looking to be offended. In zone three and zone four, people are looking for things to be grateful for. They're looking for gratitude. You can see the difference between zone one and zone two and zone three and zone four is a chasm. And Badger, a very, very happy birthday to your son. That's just beautiful. And to Anthony, he said, I see forgiveness as setting free from whatever has hurt you and learning how to be better and protect yourself in the future. And it's great to see you here, Anthony. If you have family or friends who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do here each and every day, please introduce them to our community by sharing a video. We'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. And thank you, Kacharia. Great quote. We can see that a key aspect, a key component of forgiveness is learning. Learning is a critical thing to be able to do. If we stay stuck, we can't learn. If we can't learn, we can't grow. And if we can't grow, we can't be happy. But it all starts with learning. I thought it would be great to discuss what is learning and how do you actually apply it to improve yourself. Because as traders and investors, we always go up against fear. Fear is our enemy number one. We have to replace it with courage. And the way to do that is only via learning. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts and comments. And a great way to get into zone three and zone four is via the CTKS Creed. The CTKS Creed is a series of positive affirmations. And a positive affirmation is just a series of positive words that you say to yourself. A negative affirmation would be something like this. I am so stupid. I cannot learn. I always get things wrong. Whoa, they're bad. You definitely don't want to be saying things like that to yourself. You'll find your life heads off into the nearest ditch. Sometimes it can take a lot of courage to say positive words, especially if you're feeling quite negative on things. That's why we have the CTKS Creed, to say those positive words each and every day. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy, I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.